summer for us today? I mean, sure. Look at you! Is that funny? <laughs> It is August on the farm, which means that basically we are halfway through our season. Any mistakes that we have made up until this point, we just have to live through for the rest of the season. No flower farmer ever has a perfect season. And I don't trust any farmer that says that they do because part of the learning process of flower farming is making mistakes. And let me tell you, we have definitely made mistakes this year. And not so much mistakes, just things that happened that we couldn't stay on top of to make them not mistakes. So this year we planted about 1,500 gladiolis. We had an infestation of thrips. So July was so hot and we were so backlogged on irrigating. We were constantly running water one farm to the next, that getting these glads properly looked after just didn't happen. And you can see by looking at them that they're just a combination of thrip damage and sunburning and weeds just really made for a very, very, very awful season for our gladiolus. Thankfully, because we are part of a network of bigger flower growers in this area, I was able to get glads from other farmers who had had successful seasons. But one thing we might have to look at doing next year is spraying glads so that we don't have issues with thrips again. 
Now behind me here, these are the sunflowers that self-seeded. So these actually ended up being a lifesaver for us. Uh, we have about a quarter of an acre of sunflowers planted here behind. They were all succession planted. We started planting our sunflowers back in May, you know, just before our last frost. And because July was so dry, because we couldn't get water out to the farms fast enough, because we were literally living through drought conditions and had less of an inch of rain over the course of four weeks, these sunflowers ended up being our saving grace. Had this patch not self-seeded, we would not have focal flowers at all right now. Because the other challenge, of course, has been that the dahlias have been so far behind because it's been so dry and because that farm actually uh, had one, one of their underground pipes had rusted through. So we hadn't had drip there for two weeks and we spent a whole bunch of time trying to get all of the drip irrigation fixed, source uh, additional bins for water uh, so that we could actually run drip to the dahlias. Finally, this past weekend, we had three straight days just full of rain. Uh, so that was a really big help. But had we not had these, our season would have been so much worse than it actually was. So another challenge on the farm this year has been amaranth. Amaranth is one of our best selling crops to the wholesaler. We are one of the few people around here that grows this intentionally for florists. And it has also been a really tough year. Normally in July, when the amaranth is being succession seeded, um, we've had last year, for instance, we had so much rain on the overnights that all of the amaranth actually survived. It germinated, it came up, and it created really, really beautiful plants. This year, my row is looking a little sadder. This is the best they've looked in weeks to the point where as McKenna's filming this right now, she kind of went, whoa, when she saw it because that's how awful they've looked. Failure though, on the amaranth front, has been my green tail amaranth, which got absolutely just destroyed in the rain. Uh, so we're gonna end up cutting most of this and harvesting it just for dried arrangements later. Now the other thing to note is that the sunflowers are extremely short this year. Last year, our white night sunflowers were this tall off the ground. And as we were coming through and cutting them, it was basically like walking through a giant field just full of happy, right? It was bright, it was beautiful, and it was taller than all of us. This year, our sunflowers are about this, this high. Uh, so just, just barely coming up to my waist. And again, it's because of drought condition. Now, one thing that we did do this year, and I'm really happy that we did this, was we planted our sunflowers much closer together. This promotes smaller stems, it promotes smaller heads, and that gives me the perfect sunflower for florists who want to use these for arrangements and don't want sunflower heads that are like this big around. So our, these are the white nights, are starting to bloom. And they're looking really, really great, but these should have bloomed two weeks ago. So that is about as far as we are behind on so many of our crops on the farm this year.
you look very dozy today, sir. So back in June, we showed that we had bought a greenhouse. Yay, greenhouse, supposed to be revolutionary. Greenhouse is still sitting on the ground. So this has now become September's task. We basically need to have this up and ready to go by the end of September so that we can start putting in our fall planting of ranunculus and getting it prepped and ready for tulips for the 2023 season. There's just not enough hours in the day to get everything done that we want to get done on the farm. And we forget too that it's more difficult to do that when you have a child like Joseph who we cannot just send off to daycare while I work during the day. Our last big fail at the old drive plot this year has been this section. So we had laid this in June and the hope was to be able to succession plant more zinnias in here. But then July got dry, the weeds got away from us, and this just ended up not being anything special. What we did get in was a succession of straw flower. So these will continue to bloom until frost and we will be able to dry these blooms and use them for dried arrangements later on. Okay, so one really big success at the farm this year was our patch of biennials and perennials. And what we learned very quickly is we need to plant five times the amount that we actually planted for these because they were so popular and they were so productive. So the first is we already have started another succession of foxglove, which is going to go in and over winter. So we're gonna be strawing over this patch and we're going to be planting out the rest of this row in a couple weeks with more foxglove seedlings. Uh, so we have, I think, four different varieties yet that we're going to be putting in. Most of them are the Camelot variety of uh, foxgloves, but these have been really beautiful, really popular in our mason jar arrangements, and have been really beautiful for wedding work. On the other side of the row, we have the delphinium, and this one surprised me with how well it did. So these were the Pacific Giant Bennery Series delphinium. They produced one really long, beautiful center stem at the beginning of the growing season, and you can see now that they are producing offshoots. And these are lovely because again, we can use these in smaller arrangements. They're really beautiful for wedding work, but the colors of them are so beautiful. They're almost iridescent, and it really, really feels like you are handling magic when you, when you cut these flowers. So we are gonna be putting in five rows of delphinium and Bannery Giant delphiniums next year because the florists love them, our market customers love them, and I think that our wholesaler next year is going to be really, really drawn to these specific varieties of delphinium. And if I'm looking to sell more flowers wholesale, I need to have the quantity on the farm in order to do that. And so knowing now that this crop has done well, it's been very happy here, and it's something that we can continue to add to the farm over the next few years, means that this crop for me was a huge success for 2022. So similarly, we have had an incredible crop of status this year. And I don't know if it's because they enjoyed the drought conditions, but we have had some of the longest stems of status that I have ever seen. Like it is the full length of my arm this year and every single color has been producing absolutely gorgeous flowers. I'm hooked. I can't wait to grow more of this in 2023. And our market customers have been absolutely loving this. We've been selling bunches of this at the market and the customers know that they can dry it and enjoy the bright, beautiful colors all through the winter. So next, although weedy, we have had a really, really beautiful crop of annual scabiosa. And we have had a beautiful, beautiful crop of celosia. I am absolutely drawn to the colors of Celosia. I love it. And I think my favorite variety that we're growing this year is the Terracotta Celosia. When I had ordered this, I definitely, definitely expected it to be much more 
of like a burnt orange color but it really is this beautiful beautiful pink kind of apricot color which I can't wait to pair with some of our peachy dahlias I think is just going to look so stunning in bouquets this one also is super popular uh, for drying and will look gorgeous in pumpkin arrangements in the fall as well on winter wreaths it'll give us a little bit of that blush coloring for our trendier customers now at the old drive plot the thing to remember is that we have this farm essentially planted so that everything here is two weeks behind the green door gardens plot the reason i do that is succession planting is important to the success of a farm but i always get really freaked out because around this time my zinnias look really really sad and small and the plants don't look as full as i necessarily want them to be but most of that is that i have to remember that these zinnias are two weeks behind the ones at the other farm which means in two weeks these are going to be bushy and huge and beautiful but they have been putting off really really beautiful flowers the Bene the bannery giant zinnias here are always exceptional they always have loads and loads of petals and the colors are just incredible. So this crop, I would say, at this moment, in the middle of August, is a success. Poor Caitlin has been weeding for two days. Croc. Farm croc has lived through and stayed on this stake through the epic storm of May 2022. Uh, it has stayed through multiple thunderstorms. It survived the winter up here and it feels like it is going to become a staple of the green bee flower farm insofar as nobody knows who it belongs to and it has been here now for almost a year. McKenna's potting up foxglove right now because we are doing a fall planting of foxglove uh, in order to start perennializing it for the 2023 growing season. So these are ready to go. They very badly need to be potted up. Uh, they're going to actually be staying down under grow lights for the next little while, uh, but they are starting to outgrow their current situation. So they need to go in bigger pots. Uh, second thing is I am starting to pre-sprout ranunculus. So it is August the 8th. Uh, we are about two months out from Canadian Thanksgiving, which means that I have about two months, ten weeks-ish, uh, to start getting these ranunculus going. So we are going to be pre-sprouting these today, and my hope is that I am going to have them available for Thanksgiving, which is the middle of October, and they are going to be going into the back bed. We are going to be growing them uh, under hoops. Um, and I should actually continue to have ranunculus well into November if this works properly. So, woo, here we go. I am pre-sprouting five different varieties of ranunculus right now. We are doing, these are all picote, picote, picote variety ranunculus. This was actually from my farmer friend Greg who gave me a big bag that we actually counted was like 600 or 700 ranunculus in this bag anyways we're only starting about half of them so we're going to be putting about 300 ranunculus in so i'm going to pre-soak these making sure again the same way we did in the spring to label 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 i'm using organza bags again so what i'm going to do is put all of the same variety of ranunculus corms in this bag we're going to soak them for a couple hours come back later tonight and then stick them into trays of dirt
there be lights? Downstairs, and we're not sure who left it downstairs. Do you guys even use we, we don't use this in our house, um, but I'm entertained and I'm interested, and this is like the studio's version of the croc. So it's also really important to remember that this entire patch behind me here, basically from where the reseeded sunflowers start all the way to the last succession of sunflowers over there, that was the entire old dry farm last year. So I would say that even though it looks much more spaced out, we are actually growing double the amount of flowers this year and we are like three days from being just swimming in blooms. So August is gonna be a good month. I'm really, really excited to see what is going to be growing, what we are gonna be harvesting, the beautiful varieties. And at the end of August, we will be starting a stint of about seven wedding weekends in a row. I can't wait to take you along for that. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna follow along on our flower farming journey, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It means so much. It's very helpful to the business. And as always, happy flowering. Okay, so it's, it's McKenna's last, last day today. So we have to perform the HR exit interview. Uh, so McKenna, uh, did you enjoy your time working at Greenby Floral Co? Absolutely not. <laughs> that was so miserable. Did you develop any new skills? No, I regress. <laughs> Did you enjoy working with coworkers? No. Again, miserable. How was the management team? Subpar at best. Sweet. Uh, do you feel that your ideas, comments, concerns were heard and taken into consideration? No, HR mostly just kind of like whined at me and farted. <laughs> I felt like that was really inappropriate for the workplace. <laughs> Did you feel protected and represented by HR? Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> you just said that HR sucked. Any comments, <laughs> critiques for the company going forward? Uh, I can't put on a committee for that one. I used them all up. <laughs> I used it all up. I don't get good. Notes from the management team. Oh. Thank you for being such a, a large part of the business success these last two years. Your willingness to take on the bucket. I can't say this. The bucket patrol. You're going to have to like leave that. Or weed lady without complaint set a great tone. Your talent and eye for design made sales a success. We appreciate your uncompromising approach to who you are as a person. You have taught us a great deal about working with others in the community. Thank you for laughing at the dad jokes, whether or not you found humor in them, listening to the onslaught of American politics, and waiting patiently for HR to communicate with you. You will always have a place here, even if it is only to make pottery. <laughs> Sincerely, Joseph. Can I keep this? Yes. <laughs> is that his hand? Yes. Is that his signature? Yes. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, honey. Aww. Have a great year at school. Yes, of course. It's been awesome.